Welcome to Embedded World 2010 from Nuremberg. I'm Jeff Lees from NXP Microcontrollers and today we're going to show you some of our latest demonstrations of our ARM and ARM Cortex roadmap. Now this week's very important for us because we just announced together with ARM as a, one of the first licensees of the Cortex M4 processor core and NXP will be working on bringing a Cortex M4 microcontroller to the market at the end of 2010. Now Cortex M4 is the latest in the range of Cortex M microcontrollers. This time last year NXP announced the Cortex M0 microcontroller and this has rapidly become our most popular entry-level microcontroller. Cortex M4 extends the range by adding digital signal processing functionality to create a combined hybrid microcontroller and DSP and the classification of this market is digital signal control. So the future product range will be a range of digital signal controllers based on Cortex M4. M4 is a new core which adds 72 DSP instructions to the existing Cortex M3. These DSP instructions are supported by a new high performance digital signal processing library that we're going to show you later and Paul Beckman from DSP Concepts will be introducing that demonstration. In addition, Cortex M4 adds a single precision floating point unit, so it brings some very advanced math processing capability into the embedded microcontroller space. And we're very excited at NXP microcontrollers that now we have a complete ARM Cortex microcontroller range, ranging from the Cortex M0 through the Cortex M3, our latest Cortex M3 at 120 megahertz is the most powerful and the highest performance Cortex M3 on the whole marketplace today and soon to be introducing the Cortex M4 microcontroller range. Hello, my name is Paul Beckman. I'm with DSP Concepts and I'm here at the Embedded World Show on behalf of NXP to show you some of the features of the newly announced Cortex M4 processor. Cortex M4 processor has a new feature called DSP Extensions. It's a set of 72 new instructions that are targeted at numerically intensive applications. Instructions like uh, multiply, accumulate, barrel shifter, saturation, and so forth that are used by uh, uh, typical digital signal processing applications. There's full 32-bit versions. It has a single cycle 32-bit multiply accumulate. There's also 16-bit versions, 16-bit SIMD versions where it can do two of these operations in parallel in one instructions. And there's even 8-bit SIMD versions where you can do four operations in parallel. And that's particularly good for video applications. What I'm here to show today is a real-time audio application and comparing the performance of the M3, which doesn't have the DSP extensions, with the M4 processor, and we have a processor here that has uh, the DSP extensions. Uh, running in real time here, I have a graphic equalizer. It's stereo processing on multiple bands of audio, and it's full 32-bit precision, so this is a very high-quality audio equalizer you might find in automotive or professional audio application. On the M3 processor, without DSP extensions, it's taking about 60% of the CPU, and with the DSP extensions, it's taking about 12%. So you can see there's a fact of four to five speed improvement with the DSP extensions. And what I think you'll find is this improvement occurs not only for audio applications, but you'll also find it for other numerically challenging operations like motor control and so forth. And that's all, the whole advantage is from these new DSP extensions. Hello, my name is Gerda Dwar from uh, NXP Semiconductors. I'm an application engineer with the uh, uh, product line microcontrollers and I want to tell you something a little bit more about uh, motor control and everything we offer on motor control. Um, so we're targeting uh, with uh, NXP Semiconductors, we are targeting the white goods market and the industrial market uh, for which we already made some quite some no uh, nice demos. So first of all we have the WC1700 um, asynchronous motor demo. It's a pretty nice demo because we can run an asynchronous motor, AC induction motor without or just a little bit CPU load by using the DMA from, from a memory onto the GPIOs. The second demo we have is an LPC2900 which functions uh, with field-oriented control. So field-oriented control is a high, high level extensive motor control controlling the factor of the flux in the motor. Uh, this is 
uh, uh, rich by uh, extensive uh, PWM structure in, into the uh, LPC 2900. The third demo is um, an LPC 1100, so our newest uh, product, the Cortex M0, and we show you here an application with the Cortex M0 running a brushless DC motor, so for the low cost, low end uh, motor control, and even this. Uh, this product we have here has a CAN interface, so you can connect it up to your CAN bus and it works fine. Hello, my name is uh, Mike Bucks. I'd like to welcome you to the Embedded World Fair. Uh, I'm here standing at the NXP stand. Um, and I'm working for Philips Supply Technologies. And Philips is here to show what we can do uh, with NXP technology and ARM technology uh, for embedded control. At Philips Applied Technologies, we developed this controller board, which has um, uh, an ARM microcontroller from NXP and two 150 watt uh, motor controllers. And with this single small board that fits in the palm of your hand, we can control two motors. Philips also wrote uh, a software framework that enables you to do real-time embedded control using this board. And with this board we build an application. This application is a 8 degree of freedom robotic arm which utilizes uh, four of the embedded boards I just showed. And this robot uh, can do basically about any chore. Um, it's very generic. Uh, I would like to show you a demo of uh, what it can do here at the show. The robot is quite advanced. It's uh, really light for its kind. Uh, the moving part is only about three kilos. And the robot has uh, a lot of integrated sensors, uh, force sensors and position sensors in all the joints. So he can do advanced control.